Thanks. Uh, we are now looking at the movement and settlement of the Bantu and the specific group we are holding, the Eastern Bantu. Uh, of course, we shall begin by looking at these people as part of the Bantu speaking people of East Africa. Uh, in other words, it is a, a, big, a, a, a small group uh, which is part of a bigger one, of the, the, the bigger Bantu store. But we are looking at it specifically and being called the Eastern Bantu. And the, being part of the bigger Bantu group, it means they are part and partial of the Bantu. But it is a, a specific group known as the Eastern Bantu. Uh, when we look at the migration of these people, history tells us that their migration is not clear. So uh, we are basing on so many theories and it's still a mystery. Mm -hmm. It is still debatable. Up to now we are, we are still debating how they did what? They moved. So it's not yet clear. It's not clear. There's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, others say they probably came from Southern Congo or West Africa. So this one brings us back to the theories of their, of their homeland one theory that's talking about the South, the, the, the Congo Basin theory and the, 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 the Congo Basin theory or Katanga province theory, whereas another one is talking about the Cameroon Highland theory. So that's what we are looking at. The same thing applies. We are saying they could have come. That's why we are using this term, probably. Probably came from Southern Congo or West Africa. That's why we are saying not clear. Uh, their migration was gradual and seasonal. Uh, it did not take place at at one uh, in one day. The migration did not occur in one day. It took a, 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 a long time. That's why we are calling it gradual and seasonal. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, we are looking at uh, one group uh, leaving, and of course, after some point, after some days, uh, others could do could also move. So it was not an event of a single day, but uh, an event that went on for some good, uh, for some long time. Then we are told that they entered East Africa in different clans and groups, mm -hmm. and even families. Yes, or even families. So that could have been the, 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 the way they entered, in clans, groups, and families. So a different family would live, and then another one follows, then it would be a clan, decide, depending on how the group decided to move. So that's another important note. Entered East Africa through the southwestern part of Tanganyika. Yes, that Tanganyikan bend, when you do the East African map, where Tang, the Lake Tanganyika, just uh, penetrates to border with the Victoria. So it is the south part of Tanganyika, especially the Lake Tanganyika part, and the southern part of Lake Victoria. So where Victoria, Lake Victoria is like this. And then where Tanganyika, Lake Tanganyika, and the whole stripes. So we can see the two bordering each other where this is the north of Lake Tanganyika and the south of Lake Victoria. That was the one they are calling the entry point. The entry point of the what? Of the uh, Eastern Bantu. Uh, north of Lake Tanganyika and south of Lake uh, Victoria. That is uh, the entry point of these people known as the Eastern Bantu. Uh, the Eastern Bantu are said to have crossed the dry, the dry Tanganyika Plateau between 1000 and 1300 AD. So from Lake Tanganyika, from the north of Lake Tanganyika, they crossed uh, into the dry areas, these areas where there was uh, no, uh, where the, 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 the place was dry, and specifically it was uh, used for hunting, originally used for hunting, but of course with the coming of the Bantu and the finding these people who were there, the hunters, they, 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 they defeated them and took over. 
and that's where they settled in the cross, I mean, I mean in the Tanganyikan Plateau, and that was between 1000 and 1300 AD. And we say it was possible for them to disperse the people they found there because of the, uh, the, the presence of uh, the iron tools that they possessed. Uh, after that, after crossing into the Tanganyika Plateau, it resulted into the Eastward Movement mm, up to the Taita Hills. That is because of the demand for more land. As the demand for more land increased, it resulted into the eastward movement up to the Taita Hills, another uh, highland area where they settled with ease. Why? Because the original inhabitants were very weak and were defeated with ease. Uh, therefore, after moving into the Taita Hills, we are told that the Taita Hills now became their what? Their dispersal point. And what do we mean by dispersal? The, the split. It is a split. The group of the Bantu split. The Eastern Bantu split into more other sub small what groups. And that's why we see the smaller groups that emerged out of the split include the Tai the, the, the Pare. So the, as a result of the split, we got the Pare, we got the Chaka, we got the Taita, we got the Samba, the Duruma, the, 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 the Ngueno, and the all others that settled around the Taita Hills and the Kilimanjaro Hills. And of course, areas around the hills are very important. One, uh, they have fertile soils, and that's why they settled there with ease. And one of the reasons for their migration was they need to look for areas where they could do what? Carry out agriculture because of the outbreak of famine in their homeland. So, by settling around the Taita and the Kilimanjaro Hills, they were very sure that they are now going to have an area for cultivation. Still, as a result of that split or dispersal, we had the Pokomo, Giriyama, Segeju, and the Nyeka. These two, the Segeju and the Nyeka, they became very important participants in the long distance trade. And of course, even the Indian Ocean trade, because these were the interior people who sent goods at the cost during the Indian Ocean trade, eh, some of the goods were uh, transported by the Segeju and Nyeka. And of course, when the Portuguese came at the coast of East Africa, the Segeju also became a threat. It's one of the problems that the Portuguese faced. The Segeju, they were known as man eaters. So the Segeju and Nyeka moved northwards around the coast up to the up to Sumwaya. So you can see this is also because of the need for more land. You know the Bantu were moving like bushfire. They were eating across the entire East Africa. So because of the split here we saw, the dispersal, and having gotten all this from the split, the continuous movement resulted into uh, the Nika and Segeju moving northwards around the coast. So they followed the coast and they, they reached a place called Sumwaya. This is in the northern part. This is the northern coast of East Africa, along the coast where we, have, we, we see the place known as Sumwaya. But we are told that while at Sumwaya, that is along the coast, another dispersal occurred. And the, why did it occur? It was because of the pressure from the notorious tribes known as the Gala. They were unfriendly. By the way, the Gala in history have been, uh, been so rude. These are the same people that were a threat to the early explorers. They gave trouble to jo Jacob Erdit and many other explorers that came in East Africa, the Gala. And of course, uh, working, uh, working among the Gala was an impossible mission for many of these missionaries. So the missionaries and explorers had trouble with the Gala. So it is the Gala who made the, 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 the Nika and the Segeju to disappear. And what does that one mean? They now, the Nika and Pokomo moved southwards. Because of the pressure from the Gala, they now move southwards, only to be called the coastal and the highland Bantu. Why? Why were they called coast, coastal and highland Bantu? Because they first settled in the highland areas, like we saw, Taita and Kilimanjaro. 
that were now names them the Highland. But then when they went along the Songwai, that was a coastal area, they, they got another name, which was coastal. So we can call them coastal and highland. Why? Because they settled at the coast and at the same time at the what? In the highland areas. Settling at the coast and the highland areas gave them their basic name. And that's how they came to get that name, coastal and highland. Having been dispersed by the Gala from the coastal areas, and of course getting where to settle after moving southwards along somewhere and then settling at the coast of East Africa. Mm. We continue with the movement and settlement of this town Bantu. Uh, another group that later came to settle as a result of the dispersals by the different uh, groups. We have seen the Gala dispersing the Bantu and then later came to be known as Coastal Island. So from the pressure that the Gala created, we find that the Akamba, or call them Kamba if you want, you can call them Akamba or Kamba. This is a group that later came to be very instrumental in the long distance trade. They are one of the major participants in the long distance trade, which by the northern uh, trade route. But these people, the Akamba Chuka, Chikuyu, and the Embu, because of all those conveniences created by the Gala, moved to the, high, to the Kenya Highlands. And because of that, by preferring the Kenya Highlands, they came to be known as the Highland Bantu. They have now lost the, other, the, the name Coastal, because they are no longer the what? At the coast. Now that they have settled around the Kenya Highlands, this one we know was later preferred by the white settlers because of the importance of the Kenya Highlands fertile soils and of course a strategic location. So because of the Kenya Highland being strategic for them to carry out agriculture, they got a new name. So in other words, they got a name depending on where they did what, they settled. Yes, a place they settled gave them the name. So that's why they are calling them Highland Band. But they are not calling them Kenya Highland Band, no. They just call them Highland Band. That we, we, we are told that because of population in pressure, or the, because of the uh, arrival of many groups, the population did what? Short up. Population increased, and because of the population pressure, among the Highland Band, those that were settling around the Kenya Highlands, especially the Chikuyu, those are the owners. That's why when the white settlers came, the first reaction from the locals was from the Chikui who had lost land to the whites for settlements. So because of the increased pressure and the increased population, especially the Chikui, it caused further expansion. In other words, others had to leave because the area around the Kenya Highlands became very small for them. So they had to leave and go elsewhere. And that one brings us to another migration. Mm -hmm which was going to take place. But as they were migrating eastwards, they met a problem of the Maasai and the Kamba. So another problem comes. Much as they were fleeing from the Gala, they now get uh, inconvenienced by the Maasai and the Kamba, other hostile uh, tribes. So that one was uh, another problem. That's why I think that their movement was curtailed or stopped by the Maasai and the Gala. I mean Kamba, who were another hostile group. And we are told that this, the Eastern Bantu migration continued up to 1850. It had started around 1000. So it moved up to 1800 AD. You can imagine. So up to this time, they were still doing what? Moving up to 1850. Some groups, however, remained on and close to the coast. Not everybody left, like these ones who left the coast and they went to the Kenya Highlands only to be called the Highland Band. Some remain there at the coast. So, much as the rest went, others remain there. Why? Because they preferred uh, strategic areas at the coast, which were uh, very important for cultivation, and others were very busy doing some fishing. And so, they could have remained there to settle permanently. 
and because of the dark zone in the pressures from uh, the hostility uh, of the what of the gala yes and that's one brings us to the point that the coastal and island bantu are sometimes referred to as the eastern bantu why because they, they settled in the eastern part of east africa whereas those who settled in the western part especially in the intercaspian region we are known as the western bantu those who settled in central tanzania we are known as the central tanzanian bantu so it is where they settled that gave them their what their name and we shall see many more uh, examples for example the 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 Pugiriyama, Pokomo, and these others that you later uh, fought in the Majimaji Rebellion, the Ngindu, all those form part of the Selzan Tanganyika Bantu. So, two names can be used to explain these people. You can call them Eastern Bantu or Coastal and what? Highland. Why? Because they first settled at the coast, the highland uh, areas, the coast and then the highland areas. But uh, they can ask them in another way. How did the Eastern Bantu migrate into East Africa? Or how did the Coastal and Highland Bantu? So the two names, you should know another name for this group. Uh, we also told that part of these people, the Chukwa, came up to River Tana and they are said to have arrived around 1300 AD. So it was just this, uh, uh, my, uh, they, they were migrants just meandering all over. They were just um, uh, moving without any what, specific uh, area to settle. The Embu followed, they followed the Chukwa because these had settled together at some point and they, they arrived around 1450 AD. Finally, the Kikuyu, those who were a threat, I mean who were, a, uh, who were a, a, the owners of the Kenya Highlands. The owners of the Kenya Highlands also arrived around 1500 AD. And the last one is the Eastern Bantu, which occupied which areas? The region between east of Rift Valley, that is in Kenya. And you know how important the Eastern Rift Valley was? It was associated with fertile soils. That's why they prefer those areas in Kenya. And the north of Tanganyika. So, eastern part of the Rift Valley of East Africa and the northern part of Tanganyika is where most of these uh, Bantu groups are said to have settled where it is. That one brings us to the end of uh, the migration and settlement of these people.